Do you sometimes feel like you're not in control of your own destiny? And the world is maybe a little bit against you and it doesn't matter how you try to rise. You kind of keep getting knocked down a notch. If so, sovereignty core wound might be for you. Let's go. This is actually one of my favorites to teach on because it tends to be the surface level one that we have to clear before we get to the real core root of what's going on for a person and how to fully set them free. Mm -hmm. But sovereignty, if we want to look at this and we want to give it a destiny or a, a definition, I was like a destination. That's the word I want to say in the next sentence. Brain, slow down. <laughs> it's our sense of freedom and yeah. the ability to control the path we're about to take or our own destiny. Mm -hmm. And sovereignty isn't about having, you know, every single choice available to you. Soul level sovereignty, in fact, isn't even about having free will, which I'll break down a little bit today, because that's kind of a controversial one in the spiritual community, which I love. So I'm excited to get to that. But it's that space where we know that we are living in complete alignment with what we know we're here to do, with the people we know we're here to do it with, with continuing to find the synchronicities and the crossing of paths of the people who enrich our life and make it even better. Mm -hmm. And so when we have a sovereignty core wound, it shows up in really interesting ways. But one of the biggest ones is in addictions and numbing behaviors. Okay. I know it's kind of like, what, how you, did we get make, here? But you kind of assume like, I mean, maybe I'm wrong about this, but most of us, I think, assume that anytime somebody's dealing with addictions, it's specifically trauma related. Doesn't and have to be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot of times people use addictions when they don't feel free. Right. So that could be free from the emotions, free from the trauma, free from the parents, free from the money, free from the job. Sure. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times people lean into addictions and numbing behaviors when they feel like they're not living in alignment to where they're supposed to go. And especially if they have no idea where that's supposed to be. Right. And so they'll fill the space and they'll leave body and leave time. And so the first thing I always look at when I get a client that comes in that tells me, you know, I'm using some kind of narcotic, alcohol, marijuana, psilocybins, whatever the thing may be. Sugar is another one. Food processed foods, because those are addictions, coffee, even like excessive coffee use. Mm -hmm. If they are scrolling TikTok nonstop and they can't stop, if they have no other interests other than watching people dance like idiots on reels, like those are all things that are mind numbing behaviors. Can't get away from the, like the little video games, whatever. Like emotional soothing too. Yeah. yeah, totally. These are the things that I start watching for right away in this sovereignty core wound, because what it says to me is, I don't have anything big enough out front of out in front of me to make all of this stuff lesser important or irrelevant in my life. And I need to fill space until I find out what that thing is. Mm -hmm. So I can even relate to this because I go through periods of it in my own life. And I want to be very careful about how I label this right now, but I want to give you guys an example. Mm -hmm. I find when I'm in between visions, meaning I've set an anchor and the goal is already in motion and I already can see it coming to fruition. And I just have to be patient because everything's already there and it's just like timing, right? So you don't if have giving, like a big thing that you're working towards right now. You're right. kind of just waiting for the last thing to fully manifest. Right. And to just close out that project or to have the thing actually go live to people or whatever the thing is. Mm -hmm. When I'm in between that phase and then like gathering data and doing something new, that's when my brain wants to fill space time with something like what I just talked about, some kind of addiction. For me, what it used to be was putting games on my phone mm -hmm. and like the mindless scrolling and, you know, clicking things together and it going, pow, you're, are you leveled up? Pow, you're, the dopamine hits up? from the screen. It's 100%. But then what would come in with that? Chips, candy bars, right? Those were my vices, craving McDonald's. Mm -hmm. So it was all of those dopamine hits in the space in between where I had already kind of completed a vision and was just waiting for it to finish its manifestation because it was already rolling, but the next vision hadn't arrived yet. So I didn't have anything purposeful enough to anchor into for the next phase. I would fill it with these things. So is there a part when you're, when that's happening for you, then is there almost like a subconscious or ego part of you that feels like you don't have choice or freedom in that moment because you're kind of in a holding pattern 
and that's how it's responding. Cause I'm trying to relate this to the sovereignty piece, right. Of like feeling like you don't have choice or like you can't move. Yes. Yeah. yes. It, it feels like you're paralyzed in that moment because you know, you can't move on because you'd abandon this thing and leave it behind. But you know you can't just live back there because it's already in motion. So you feel like you're in that liminal space. Okay. And that's the most dangerous space people can be in. It's not in the past. It's not, you know, in the future. It's that space in between where you really have no vision either way. So it really feels like you have no direction, no choices, no freedom yeah. Yeah. on some level, which is then your body's trying or your mind or your emotions are trying to fill it with some kind of soothing activity. Yes, because your body and the planet and the universe are vacuums. They're vacuums. And if there is space, they will suck things into it. Oh, yeah. Right? And nice. if we're not the gatekeeper of that, controlling what we suck in. Something else will do it for you. <laughs> like the media, like all the chocolate bars in the alley, right? Like all the colors that we get attracted to on the food labels that we shouldn't be gravitating towards. So we have to be very careful about being the gatekeeper to one mind, but yeah. So addictions are one thing we see about sovereignty core wounds. And would I say in that moment, it's a core wound? No, but here's where it goes a little bit deeper. Okay. When we're in those spaces where we know there's somewhere we're supposed to be going and we feel like we have a purpose, a mission, a reason for being, there's a reason for me to be on this planet and do what I'm doing, but we can't see what it is we start feeling like either we're not enough or who am I to be doing this thing? We start questioning our abilities and our gifts and not leaning into the things that we're naturally good at. Maybe we start sabotaging our unique abilities and the things that we're really classically good at. And we'll start feeling like maybe I'm not supposed to do that thing. So that's where the core wound piece comes in is that we start overriding all of those subconscious thoughts that we've gathered or picked up through, maybe it's our family line who have told us you're too much, you're too loud, sit down, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then we start overlaying that onto this false meaning of, I don't know where I'm going and I don't know what I'm doing. So that's one connection. Yeah. Another connection is a lot of people have a lot of trouble standing on their own two feet. Yeah. And we kind of talked about this from a different angle and one of the other core wounds, but we can build codependencies when we have a sovereignty core wound too, which cross references in connections. Mm -hmm. But in the sovereignty core wound, what would happen is that instead of me making a decision to go forward with or without you, I could only go forward or back with you. That is the only option. You see this a lot in relationships. 100%. But I actually even did this with you for a period of time, Violet, because when you came into my business, yeah. I was going through such rapid growth that it felt like so, so stabilizing to have somebody else that believed in it. And so if you didn't like my idea, we just wouldn't go. Right. And if you, if you wouldn't come with me, well, I can't go that direction either. So I got to fit this to make you happy and me happy. Right. And so that's actually coming from a sovereignty core wound of like, I don't know if I can fulfill this mission unless everybody else is coming with me. Mm -hmm. And so I have to do some work on that. And so this has even been a recent thing because new level, new devil, the more people you're serving, the bigger your company gets, the bigger your team is, the more you understand yourself, you change. And so now what I've recognized and Violet and I've had conversations about this is here's where I'm going. This is the vision I've got. This is what I know is right for my pathway. And you can come all the way along with me but I'm also okay going on my own now if I need to, because I want you to be sovereign in your decision too. And so that was a big change because before I was like, Violet together. Okay. Like we got we to march this path together. And now I'm like, it's okay. I'm going here. Come with me or don't. I like, actually had a new level of this come up this year. And very recently, like in the last yeah. two months, I've been kind of like, cause I was working with a coach this last year, you know that. Mm. And so I've been looking at and become more becoming more and more aware of how this was showing up in my life. But I had this huge awareness in the last couple of months about um, like where I had created a situation where it would be very difficult for you to get rid of me Oh, yes. for safety. Right. And I don't know if any, anybody listening to this is the kind of person who you're like, my, my whole company would fall apart if I left because I just, I know everything that's going on. I am like the gatekeeper. Everybody relies on me. Like, I'm sure there's somebody listening who is that at their workplace. Well, that was me. 
I see moms do this in their households. Oh yeah. Moms do this in their households too. Yeah. So it might not even be at a company level. It could be the mom who looks after all the groceries, the bills, the kids swimming lessons, knowing where everything is, keeping the house organized, keeping the schedule, all the things. So like it's synonymous. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I was doing that for myself to feel like, you know, I wasn't going to be left behind or abandoned or whatever. And I was doing this subconsciously and it had worked for my career for a very long time. Like mm -hmm. I was, I'm very employable. <laughs> But it got, yeah, it got to a point though, where I realized that if something were to happen and I did want to leave, I was like, it would take a solid three months of me unwinding myself from this company to be able to actually get out and to move on. And I was like, that doesn't feel safe for either of us. Mm -mm. And I wasn't able to see that part until I had dealt with it with my partner. Right. And it showed up in a different way there because I was actually always trying to get away, even though. I didn't want to. It was just his steady nature was like freaking me out a lot. <laughs> Which is right? so ironic, right? It's so ironic. But yeah, it's it's so fascinating. But I was doing that with you and I had made myself indispensable mm -hmm. in our business. And so my new goal is to make myself completely dispensable so that I know that when we're working together, it's not because you don't have a choice or it would be too difficult for you to not work with me and because both of us are choosing it actively. Yeah. Which is such a different energy. Okay. So that puts us into the next one that we see with this core wound is that these people, they feel like they don't have a choice. Right. So you perfectly illuminated and stepped me right into that one. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, people who really get into those conversations that they're like, this is what's going on in my life. And this just is the way it is. Is it? well, yeah, this is the way it is. So they get into a lot of justification and say, this is the only way, or they'll, they'll be very black or white thinking it's either this or it's this. There is no like it's come up a lot in relation to money. Oh, absolutely. Not having choice of movement because of your money situation. So yeah, like maybe if you're on a, the one I hear a lot is I'm on a fixed income. Yep. Or I can't get a better paying job because then I won't get my government stipend anymore. And then I won't have enough money or I'll have to give up that. And I'm like, but you're only making this much. If you made more money, wouldn't you be even better? <laughs> like, Right. So there's just like locked in thinking like that in the yeah. sovereignty wound. And so in that uh, case, and we see this a lot, actually, we get a lot of people who have been on disability pay or um, I get a lot of people who are ex-military too, or people who are on things like EI, right? Unemployment insurance. Yeah. And so the government is looking after their bills or I get parents in Canada, don't y'all come flooding over here right now because, oh man. But if you are lower income here, you get like $900 per kid per month from the government to lift up. It's, it's crazy. Like the child benefit tax child benefit. tax benefit. Yeah. And then you get a provincial one too, in some provinces. So I talked to so many parents and they're like, well, if I went back to work, I wouldn't get that benefit. And so they have this very, this or that it's either the government looks after me or I go back to work and I have to look after me. It probably feels to them like you're asking them to choose between working, like spending all of their time working for somebody else and making the same or less than what they're currently making it so it they feels, feel stuck right? exactly yeah. but they don't see all the window of possibility of who they are what they could be doing and where the flex space is right, right? so that's the sovereignty wound going in there yeah. um another really big one is like and this kind of ties in they really feel like they can't get out of certain situations or they feel really obligated or indebted to carry things all the way through or enslaved in certain systems so it could be jobs it could be even taking care of your parents yeah that's or a big one children like other people's kids like I've seen some people that are like you know taking care of their siblings children when they're going through hardships or whatever the case may be yeah. but if you feel like you have to take care of somebody else and you don't have a choice about that because if you don't they will fill in the blank won't have anyone else to do it that's a perfect example of this sovereignty core wound yeah so I can give you a good example of that from my own life if the so sovereignty core wound was still running in my field Mm -hmm. about two months ago, it would have sucked me back in because my father and my sister who are no longer in my life and haven't been for like eight years or so now, my dad got diagnosed with dementia, like pretty severe. And when I found out about it, 
my sister is not financially well. She's like tried to work the system to never have to pay her ex child support, like mm-hmm. just loves the system and loves the enslavement of it. Cause it gives her excuses to never have to rise or never have to do the thing. My dad never saved money to save his life and he's got nothing. And so they're now dealing with only government and healthcare available options, which to be honest, public healthcare is not all that it's cracked up to be. The options are pretty shitty and they don't actually look after people that well. There are a lot of gaps in the system. It's not a thrive state. It's definitely a managing the most important, like the most critical. It's a triage and it fails most of the time. Um, public health care, in my opinion, I think it's emergency it's care. It's emergency care. But if I was president, you know what I would do? I would abolish the health care model. It would go all for pay. Oh, man, I'm going to get pitchforks right now. But you know what I transition it to? Preventative care. So everything you did that was wellness focused. So massage, osteopathy, chiropractic, that stuff was covered. Yeah. Eating well. Eating yeah. well. Yeah. Not purchasing like a whole bunch of junk food. Like all of those things, not needing the doctor, you would get all those covered. Oh yeah. I was like, I don't know where you're going with this. (laughs) That's what I would do. I would change it to a well care model so that people who are looking after themselves for lifestyle mediated diseases, I'm not talking about the things that you cannot break your arm or something. That's that's emergency care. We'll cover that. Right. I'm talking about the lifestyle mediated diseases that you do to yourself that don't need to exist. Yes. that's my bout for president. Everybody vote for me or don't get your pitchforks or don't, whatever you want to do. Anyway. So, um, my dad got diagnosed with dementia, pretty severe. And my sister hasn't talked to me in years. I kind of cut her out because we just discovered that it didn't matter how I tried to come at the conversation, neutral or not, she was not going to come back and look for that space with me too. So I just decided a healthy relationship. Yeah. yeah. That relationship was just going nowhere and it was a constant drain to me. And I was toting somebody along who didn't want to rise for themselves. And I'm not okay with that. And so she didn't even talk to me directly. She pushed the message through her ex-husband who I still stay in contact with. So I have my nephews in my life. Well, if the sovereignty wound was still running in me, when I heard that story from him, I may have jumped in and rescued my sister and my dad with money. But because it's not, I was able to come from a state of neutrality after Violet asked me a couple good questions and really ask, does this help either of them achieve their life purpose and their goals and get out of this cycle for this lifetime? And the answer was no. And so I was able to choose to let them use the provincial systems that are in place. And I wasn't going to get involved. Mm -hmm. If I had come in and said, Oh no, my dad is sick. Yes. He's my birth father. Who cares that he abused me or put me into this situation or, you know, gave me bajillion, you know, levels of debt. I don't have have a choice. Nobody else will take care of him. He's got dementia. It's not even his fault at this point. You know, all those things. Yeah. Yeah. If I had done all of that, that's poor, like this sovereignty wound running because I couldn't actually make a choice. I was getting sucked in out of obligation. So hopefully that could it also be though, if you had gone into this with that, like, hell no, I'm not doing that. Like just as a reaction, because some people could be taking it that way of like, well, isn't that basically what you're doing? But I was talking to you about it and we were actively tracking it if it would. And I know that if you had gotten even just like a small amount to, to send over that you would have just done it. If you got a yes to that. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. If I had checked in and been like, yeah, I need to cut them a check for like 5,000 to get them into that one place and be done with it, I would have done it. It wouldn't have impacted me. So that's the key is can you be in a state of neutrality? If you're fighting too hard for or against, something's running in your field. So sovereignty can come in being over hyper independent, Mm. right? So a lot of people can actually move into this space where they're really fighting to be two on their own. I don't need anybody's help. I'm totally fine like this. I'm absolutely free because nobody's bogging me down. I do what I want when I want. Like that's that's just other side of that coin. Really. Yeah. Right. So that's another thing. Um, it's just like happening constantly. It's like bad luck all the time. There's always yeah. something bad going on in your life. It's like you can't catch a break. I feel like that's related to this. It can we often see it kind of tied into like psychic attacks, um, being really over sensitive and bringing everybody's juju into your field, constantly feeling like you're being drained when you're around other humans. But the bad luck thing is really interesting because sometimes you're doing it to yourself to remind you that you're on the wrong path. Oh, (laughs) 
right? And sometimes as soon as you just make the decision to go in the direction that your soul has been telling you to go, the bad luck ends. It's like the bad luck happens because you're keeping yourself in the cycle of being in the wrong space. So it's like, it's almost like your higher self is like, hey. Yeah, tripping you, <laughs> yeah. right? It's like, I'm going to shove you over, trip over that pine cone, right? Like, it's just like not getting the message. <laughs> Well, that's exactly it. So, you know, if somebody's coming to me and they're saying, Caitlin, man, in the last week, X, Y, and Z happened. Well, I mean, if it's in the last week, that's different, but like chronic, like this is a cool well, thing, right? Well, yeah. But if they're saying in the last week, this happened, I will say to them, has this ever happened before where you've had like a whole week going on like this? And if they say to me, not a whole week, but I've had this similar theme, like I always twist my ankle or I always seem to, I don't know, end up having to pay the government 10 times more than I thought I would or whatever the thing is. I'm going to be like, hmm, that's interesting. That's suspicious. Yeah. We should track that. There might be something under the surface. Yeah. Life can just happen though. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. hot water tanks can fail and flood your basement. Like a connection. Well, can sometimes I think in the spiritual community, we can tend towards thinking that once we have done our work, or when we're in process of it, that life should just be great all the time. And I don't think that's necessarily how the world works. No, I couldn't roll my eyes any faster or harder at that situation. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, we are human beings living in a 3D reality that has physical things that have lifespans on them, that have human error that can occur, that are subject to deterioration. And so we can just be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And it's very important that we don't draw meaning of every single thing if there's no meaning yeah. there for us. But if you're in a situation where you feel stuck, like you don't have a choice, like if you were to leave, everything would fall apart. Like you're the one holding it all together or nobody could survive without you there, or you can't move on because somebody else is imposing something on you. And this has been a consistent theme in your life. Red flag should be going off and you should be looking at, maybe I might have a core wound of sovereignty. Yep. Yes. The other really interesting one, and we didn't really talk about this yet, is money and sovereignty. Yeah. So people who constantly find that their money doesn't come through themselves and they don't really have choice with it. And they always have to ask a partner or a parent for that cash to make the decisions they want to make. Mm. That can be another little indicator that there's something going on there. So I wanted to just slide that one in. Yeah. In case you feel but like somebody else is controlling your fate. Exactly. Because that's what it comes down to when that wound is running. It feels like everything else is controlling your destiny except you. Right. Okay. So I know there are physical symptoms that start to show up for people when they're dealing with this. So do you want oh, to talk about that? There's actually a decent list of these. Okay. Um, a really common one that I see all the time is actually allergies and autoimmune conditions, sometimes cancers. So allergies especially in autoimmune conditions, it feels like our body is working against us and we can't sync up with life. Or the planet is in the case of like, if you have seasonal allergies. Yeah, like, like hay fever or something. Like the trees are attacking you. <laughs> exactly. It's like, earth doesn't love me, okay? Yeah. Um, those types of things where it feels like body is working against itself or the planet is against me, those are often mirrors for a sovereignty core wound. Sometimes it's leaky gut. Yeah. But a lot of times it's a sovereignty core wound that's caused leaky gut. So we have to clear that up at the same time. We do see certain types of cancers with this one. I tend to see them in organs that don't necessarily shut down super fast. So we don't tend to see the quick metastasizing cancers. We see the long drawn out pain in the ass cancers with these ones. What about like breast cancer? That one's jumping in out to me right that now. is a long drawn out pain in the ass okay. cancer, for sure so yeah. that's one that could be coming from something like this yeah um something like a kidney cancer would not okay right? or a brain cancer those ones typically tend to fall into one of the other categories um chronic pain and really tense muscles so when we feel like we're not going in the right direction and we feel like the world is against us we're having to carry it all we can't see and everybody else feels like they're controlling our fate, we tend to do this and we don't even recognize it. And we live in such a state of tension that everything is crowded up and tight. We'll get lots of like jaw clenching and TMJ issues and even ear tinnitus hearing issues with this one. I feel like also with that, it could be like upper body or lower body. Like, cause if yeah, you're not moving forward, 
I've seen even in some of the sessions we've done in with in some of our decodes like workshops, people will show up with hip issues or knee, leg, ankle, ankle, yep. ankle stuff. Yeah. And it's like you end up tracking it back to some place where they feel like they're not moving forward because they can't. Yep. We just create mirrors all over our body. That's all we do. The body is constantly just trying to post to the outside what's going on in the inside to hopefully get you to check in and be like, oh, maybe my knee hurts not because I have this problem, but because I don't want to run. Why don't I want to run? Oh, it's scary to do that big dream. Everybody's going to judge me. Oh, why are you feeling judged? Because my parents told me I have to do this. Well, that's a sovereignty wound because you're living under their thumb. They're controlling your destiny. Right. That's maybe why your knee hurts, right? So we can kind of unravel it. Yeah. Um, bad tummy, constipation or diarrhea, doesn't matter. It could get stuck. It could go way too fast. Uh, so if we feel like we're bringing way too much in and we're getting congested, oftentimes like it'll compact and we won't be having proper bowel movements. Or if we feel like we're just at our absolute max, we're so like scatterbrained, we can't make a decision to save our life. We will end up with a loose tummy and have things go that way lots of cravings. So in the sovereignty core wound, especially because we feel out of control and we're often in a fight flight or freeze response with our adrenal glands, we tend to get a lot of cravings for sugar, salt, and processed foods to try and give us really, really quick hits to keep our energy levels up. So we crave all the wrong things. So could this. that be then really, that sounds like it's related to what we talked about at the very top of this video about addictions and yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and brittle hair or nails. Mm -hmm. So these people tend to get a, like a lot of split ends. If you stretch their hair, like your hair should be able to stretch a fiber about 30%. If you grab one of them and you pull, it should be able to go about 30% before snapping. Theirs will break or they'll get a ton of split ends really quickly. And their nails will be flaky a lot of times and break, or they'll get a lot of those white dots through them. So what that indicates to me is they're not uptaking everything that's coming into them and therefore they're not processing and moving it out in an appropriate manner. Right. Those are some of the physical things we see. Right. Yeah. Okay. A lot. So, yeah. I'm like, I feel like a lot of people are affected by this. <laughs> they are. Yeah. And the thing is when you do the work on this one, you'll know when it's clear, when you start to operate as a person who just feels like you have no limitations. It's like the universe is a playground and it doesn't matter what gets thrown your way. Everything is figure outable. Everything everybody else sees as mountains to cross. You're like, that's a tiny little molehill. Hold my beer. Like I'm crossing that, right? Mm -hmm. You start seeing that if you have a dream, you need to chase it and you need to be ruthless in pursuit, pursuit of having the things that you want to have. Um, this one I love. You have to be careful with it. Mm -hmm. But once people have healed this one, they no longer tolerate anyone trying to slow them down, which helps them unplug from a ton of things like psychic attacks. If people are trying to say not nice things to them, or people are trying to distract you or take you off course because they're jealous or envious, or they're worried about what you're going to do. You're just kind of like, I love that you're having those feelings for me. So respect that. Love you. Love you. Love you. Going anyways. Bye. <laughs> Right. And it's like this level of just knowing that you're on the right path and you don't need to fight anyone. Absolutely. Process. And probably the most important thing in here is these people, once they've healed it, they're in this state of just like gratitude for life. They can see the gains they've made. They acknowledge the growth. They're able to see, ah, oh, this is where I was. This is what I learned. This is where I'm going. This is how it's impacting me now. And this is how I'm dreaming bigger. Mm -hmm. way out here like they just take and transform everything in this really beautiful way that results in so many cool manifestations and things showing up in their life and they achieve way more in their lifetimes than all the people who stay in this core wound and refuse to ever do the work yes. so it's pretty cool to see the turnaround story so it like unlocks this inner drive and motivation and curiosity and excitement for what else is possible in life 100 percent. they are the dreamers they are the doers and I would argue to say that every single person I've worked with, with a sovereignty core wound, who this is their actual core wound, they're carrying it because they actually are the leaders of tomorrow in whatever way. That could be in a small community thing. It could be in a larger circle. It could be doing something like I'm doing. It could be a politician. doesn't matter. But they are the doers, doers and dreamers of tomorrow. But somebody else in their life at some time, whether it's this life or previous life, came in and said, uh-uh. 
don't do that. It's not what we want you to do. I am your elder. I am your authority. This is what you do. This is what the church says. You have to act like this is what we believe, whatever that is. So yeah, I would say one other symptom I see in these people that they tell me all the time is I feel like I'm here for a reason, but I have no clue what it actually is. And I can't see it. Which sounds a lot like the purpose core wound. So I can see how it would be a little bit confusing when you're starting to see this, because like, even I think I've told you guys in these videos, if I think back to all the ones we've done that I have seen myself and experienced every single one of these, but it's really about getting to the core and what was the first, right? Well, that's just it. Something happened that allowed the rest of them to stack. Right. So if your freedom was taken away first because somebody said like, this is the way we act, this is the way you behave. No, you can't go in this direction. That's going to trample on your purpose. Mm -hmm. And once your purpose is trampled on, you're going to shut down all your connections because you can't cross paths or get those synchronicities, which is going to impact your karma because you're going to go in all the wrong directions and repeat all the wrong lessons. Right. So it just, it goes in this little shit sandwich, pardon my French, where <laughs> you don't know what's here nor there at one point, but it all started back with something. Right. And really that something is what we end up tracking in the Akashic records. And that's the skill where, you know, when we're teaching our decode students, we start this in the ancestral healing because most of us experienced it when we were a part of a family and part of a unit like that. When I tracked it back in almost every single person's field, that's where one of these began. So it's the easiest way to start pulling it apart. Amazing. I know. All right, you guys, if you'd like to, we've compiled all of these core wounds into a downloadable ebook. So you can find the link somewhere around this video or this audio, go ahead and give that a download. We also have a little bit of a quiz that we built that'll help you sort through what the actual core wound for you might be. But I'm going to give you a caveat in order to get the right answer. You're going to have to be radically honest with yourself don't over inflate. It's really important that you are very honest about exactly where you're at majority of the time, not just when you're having a good day. And that's going to help you get back to that space where it's like, I think this is where majority of these issues might be coming from. All right. We'd love to hear from you. So don't be shy. Slide into the DMs or the emails. Let us know what you picked up from this video series or from the ebook, and we'll see you all soon.